What is going on guys, it is Ahmed, and I am back today to tell you guys about an opportunity I need you to keep on your watch list for Monday. Happy Friday, the weekend is here. It's actually the le it used to be our favorite days of the week was the weekends, but now I prefer Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because those are days that we could trade, buy and sell stocks. So guys, this is one that I actually want you to keep on your radar for even the pre-market on Monday. Now, why am I saying that? Because I think we're gonna see some massive, massive, massive Price action with this, which is Sorrento, ticker symbol SRNE. I will go through why I truly believe in this company, why I am going to be investing. I have not opened a position yet, but after again hearing about it in the Discord and from other friends, I think that this company has some huge potential and I cannot believe I've been sleeping on it. But before I get to that, again, I mentioned I'm going to be looking at this one in the pre market. If you're interested in trading in the pre market, uh, you know, as a Robinhood user, if you are one, you cannot use. Um, Robinhood to trade in the pre-market. So look into Webull. Um, in the description below, I have my referral link that you can click and download the app. And within it, you can, within Webull, you're allowed to trade in the pre and aftermarket. And I think that's what gives it truly the X factor or the benefit. And, you know, probably a little bit, makes it a little better than Robinhood in that sense. Again, Robinhood is more user-friendly. It's more simple, but Webull just takes it, the next, takes it one level up and you get four free stocks with it. So why not? Now, Let's go ahead and get started about Sorrento. So this is one that we did see some decent price action already in the last week or so. But again, Sorrento, it's a pharmaceutical company, S-R-N-E. Now, the big thing that's been hitting headlines today, um, actually this afternoon, is there's an analyst who came out and said Sorrento could nearly quadruple in value, right? Because again, I'll go into why that is. Um, there's this analyst, Ram, I don't want to pronounce his last name, but he projects a $321 million, uh, 321 million in total for Sorrento's investments in cellul cellularity. Again, it's a clinical stage cell therapeutics company, and they have a lot of subsidiaries within the umbrella of Sorrento. So guys, this is something to just kind of keep an eye out on, but I want to talk about Sorrento and some of the things that they have in their pipeline. Um, again, and some of the things that I see in pharmacy, you know, again, I'm a pharmacist, like I've mentioned in my previous videos. And the big thing that's happening right now, guys, with COVID-19, any company that is looking to, you know, expand their um, revenue, expand, you know, financials for themselves is looking into the COVID space. Because again, although the vaccine rollout is now live, we know for a fact that people are not gonna be getting vaccinated. We know that less than, I think I wanna say 50% of people and individuals are willing to get vaccinated. I hope that number continues to grow. Now, if you're pro or against the vaccine, that is of course up to you. But again, we just know that it does look like the vaccine is pretty promising overall. So some of the things that they have here that they're looking to get FD emergency use authorization is the diagnostic test, which is COVID trace and COVID sticks. So two of these here, again, the antigen test. So antigen versus antibody. So a lot of people have been asking me just to give you guys just more information about that. What is the antigen versus the antibody test for COVID and general antigen versus antibody? So antibody testing is basically you can usually use a blood sample. You prick your finger. We do this at the pharmacy for patients who are interested. You prick the finger um, and you use just a little bit of a blood sample and you can look at people who have anti um, any antibodies. So you look for th something called an IgG antibody. And again, that's just basic for having true antibodies in, the uh, in your body because you had previous exposure, or IgM is another antibody that's looked at in these tests. And IgM, look, if you test positive for IgM, that means you have current active COVID in your bloodstream, meaning that you potentially, you do have COVID right now, you should go home and probably get some um, quick checkup with your primary care, et cetera, et cetera. So again, a couple of things that is important because we we do have tests that are available right now and they're readily available, but there's definitely room for more. There's definitely room for more. There's a high demand. The COVID track, again, that's the antibody test. And then, so I talked about antibody. Antigen is kind of what we think about with the nasal swab. So the thing that they stick up the nose and people say, oh, it touches my brain. I've actually tested some patients at my own pharmacy for um, their antigen. And again, for that, we just look to see, is there any active COVID in the nasal passage? So that is what the antigen test is. So again, these are the COVID sticks. And the big thing with what they're talking about with this FDA emergency use is that the benefit is these are take home kits, guys. And I think that's something we need to keep in mind and consider. These are take home kits to allow patients to do that themselves. 
Now, I know there's probably going to be some debate. It's like, oh, what if they're not doing it properly, et cetera, et cetera. And again, we don't know what the final product looks like, but the creator, Dr. G, uh, J.I., so if that's how you pronounce it, did mention that he thinks that this is going to be potentially, it's going to get approval, and we're going to hopefully see um, this being, you know, distributed from pharmacies to patients, even in our drive throughs et cetera, et cetera. So exciting COVID-19, as you could see, the huge addition to their pipeline is a lot of these different COVID-19, even treatments that they have. So they have some neutralizing antibody treatments in outpatient IV. They have inpatient treatments that they're in the pipeline and they're in phase one. So remember, phase one clinical trials, that means they're using this uh, medication or this treatment on real patients. Again, these are on subjects. So it's no longer in the animal stage, now it's in phase one. But phase one, again, is early. So again, early in the pipeline, but it looks like here for severe uh, critical COVID in the ICU. So again, this uh, potential treatment right here, it's currently in phase two. So as in their pipeline overall, some early stage, and that's why I think we need to keep this one on our radar, guys, because again, these things are gonna be very important in the near future. Now, they even have immunotherapy. Again, I like companies that, own, that don't only focus on one thing. Yes, having a niche is good, but having other um, areas that you're willing to uh, penetrate within the pharmaceutical market, I think that's huge. So immunotherapy, pain, so non-opioid pain, non-opioid analgesics, super important because again, the United States is suffering, suffering heavily from the opioid crisis. So if we could start finding different types of treatments for pain, especially in advanced pa um, cancer pain, I see patients on morphine equivalents, guys, that I don't even wanna mention. So if you're at a high risk for an overdose, if you're over 50 um, milligrams, uh, of morphine equivalents per day, 50 milligrams, right? I've seen patients that are on 150 who have advanced pain and advanced uh, cancer pain specifically or refractory cancer pain because it's unfortunate, but a lot of the times after people get their tumors resected, they go through radiation, their body is under this chronic pain and they have to have chronic, chronic pain management. So again, this here, again, it's just two things that they do have in the pipeline. To help the first one here for advanced pain and the other is for osteoarthritis again both the same medication and it's a capsaicin type so you can look into capsaicin but that's something you can buy topical over the counter you just rub it on your body it's kind of it comes from a red chili uh, red chili pepper extract but again it's shown uh, to improve p uh, patients who have um, dermatologic pain and even things like osteoarthritic pain but these specifically are for their injectable epidural route and intra uh, intra Articular out. So guys, please pay attention to these things that I'm mentioning. They even have some of these autoimmune uh, lymphatic delivery type systems. Um, again, things that I'm super excited about. And when you see this orphan designation here, that means that it's going to potentially need some government assistance to afford the widespread or the, because again, not orphan designation and orphan drugs in general. That's an umbrella term for the fact that people, there's not enough people with a disease that uh, necessarily need this. So again, it might be one in a thousand, one in 500. Again, a rare disease, if you will. So again, keep this one on your radar, guys. Keep all of these things in mind. Early clinical stages, some in preclinical trials, so not even really being, uh, maybe more in a bench, not quite at the uh, patient bedside or actually giving it to patients. Okay, so I'm going through a lot, but guys, I just wanna do a deep dive for you all because again, I truly believe in this company. So some of the things that they have is they mention here is just what I kind of talked about, but more in depth um, or actually less in depth, excuse me. But they kind of talk about, you know, some of the things that they have in their pipeline, the clinical stages, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the other big things is the H.C. Wainwright BioConnect that occurred this week. There was some very, very positive um, feedback that Sorrento was given after Dr. Henry G's uh, presentation because he did participate and it was pretty big. So that's why there's been some, you know, massive talk within the, the um, Wall Street community, within the stock market community about this stock. So guys, remember, let's go back one. It's currently at $9.50 a share for Sorrento. Now, what is Wall Street saying about it? So here on Tip Ranks, I just looked at what they're saying with, the, um, with analyst ratings. So two analysts rated this one. Wall Street is not sleeping on this play because they see the potential as well. So they're rating it. 25.50 on the high, or excuse me, 25.50 as an average, $30 on the high, 25.50 on average, $21 on the low. 
What are we currently at that I meant, did I say? $9.50. So at a very minimum, at a very minimum, if you believe in this company and you, you're following what other people are saying about it, they are saying that this has potential to at least double, if not triple, if not quadruple. And again, this is all that Wall Street's saying. This can go way beyond that. So for me, Wall Street is saying good things. The data is saying good things. Their, the medications that they have down in their pipeline, the pharmaceuticals are doing great things. They're changing the world. So guys, I think this is kind of a no-brainer. Truly, truly, truly a no-brainer. So again, I just looked into a little bit more of the clinical trials on um, some of the things that Sorrento has in their pipeline. But the most important thing for you all is the price action. So on the five day, we did see it around $7.20 and it's went up quite a bit, 31% this week after, you know, again, um, one of the analysts decided to come out and say, wow, I truly believe in this company after the BioConnect um, conference. The one month, again, nothing too significant, thankfully. 34% upside. Um, guys, we did see this one peak at around $18 back in August because what happened? That is when the news broke out that they're starting to look at doing the testing kits for COVID. So the Motley Fool came out with an article a couple months after. So I think it was sometime in November. And you see like there's been some volatility with the stock, but again, there, haven't, there hasn't been as much execution as people would like, but now we're starting to see some of the things come to fruition. Their testing is currently going through FDA um, emergency approval. So at any moment, they're also looking at Europe, European expansion for um, some, of their some of their things on their pipeline, including the tests as well. So everyone, I do this every time, and I tell you that this is not financial advice, and I'm not doing this for medical advice either, because I did mention some medical things in this episode, but I need every single one of you to keep this one on your watch list. If you don't have Webull, download it with the link below so you can trade in the uh, pre-market. There's going to be some volatility with this one. But if at a very minimum you can double your money, that's going to that's gotta make you happy. Start a position, not financial advice, I'll be starting a position. And I think, you know, if you're interested in it and you truly believe in the company, you should too. And again, 950, hopefully we'll see it. You know, maybe pull back a little bit on Monday because it had this 18, 19% run up. I don't foresee that it could happen, but I'm going to be starting a position because I believe in the company long term. I'm going to be averaging down. If you don't believe in the company, you sell, you sell out as a uh, stock falls and you lose money on it, which is just that's not very sensible. So make sure you do your research, go in, fact check everything I said, because, again, I'm not doing this for financial advice. I could have made a mistake. I, I am sure I am a pharmacist, but sometimes I might overlook things. So please do your own research. Look into this one. Keep it on your watch list. And until next time, guys, don't miss this one out. Don't miss this one, but keep investing.